Welcome to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host Dave Dalton and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well Piston fans, we blew a golden opportunity to win the game tonight against the Denver Nuggets. For our 12th loss in a row, this final score was 107 to 103. And Nicole Jokic, the MVP, was ejected with a minute 22 left in the second quarter. Got a second technical foul. He had uh, only nine points and five rebounds and five assists at that time. It was a one-point game. So they played with him the whole time. We were, we were only down by one. We did a great job of holding him down. Obviously, though, that enhanced our chances greatly to win the game. But somehow we just couldn't quite cut it. We had opportunities. We went the last nine minutes. We made one bucket in the last nine minutes of the game. And we could have had a size advantage down the stretch. We played Isaiah Livers and Stu and Asor and Cade and Jaden Ivey. And I've been dying. Finally, got Ivey got to start again. He was fabulous in the first half. We didn't get in the ball. He took zero shots in the second half. But we, we had these guys. We had Ivy and Asar and Livers in there. Livers goes one for seven. He hasn't played all year, and we put him in there. He makes his first shot when he first enters the game in the first quarter, and then he can't make a shot. He's not big. He's not fast. And maybe he'll turn out to be a great player, but he has not been even a good player yet. He's always injured, so he hasn't got a chance. Everybody loves him. Monty loves him. He does everything. that every, He talks on defense. He moves the ball quickly on offense. He's smart on his rotations. He does all these things that coaches love, including me. But when we are down the stretch and Asar can't score, and we're, we're giving the ball to uh, Stu in a post-up, Stu cannot score down low. The only time Stu can score down low is if you drive and you dish it, and he can dunk it, and there's nobody around him. But he tried to score over top of people a couple times, and he just gets it blocked or loses it. And Asar got blocked down the stretch, and, you know, Livers turned it over twice, and it just, you know. And on top of it, Marvin Bagley, we couldn't play him. You know, we couldn't score one bucket, and he goes 7 for 13 and 4 for 5 on free throws. He has 18 points, but he only plays 26 minutes, and he doesn't play any down the stretch, and we can't score. Stanley Amude played only 18 minutes, but he scored eight points at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And, of course, he was tired probably by then, but they took him out. And he was he, has, he had scored 11 points for the game. He can score. And, but we had no scores. We didn't get the ball to Ivy. They started double-teaming Cade. And Cade was not perfect. Cade, 27 points, nine assists, and he was really good. He had was 11 for 11 from the line. He took the ball to them. He took the ball to them at the end once and he got fouled. It appeared they hit him right across the arms, but I mean the announcer said that the defender's arms were vertical, so they didn't call the foul, but we we couldn't score and yet we had Marvin Bagley sitting on the bench. We had a size advantage. So here's Monty's quote after the game. Down the stretch, too many fouls and offensive re and gave up too many offensive rebounds in key moments. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth and it's going to keep me up at night. Well, guess what? We have an undersized lineup in there. They were undersized a little bit because they were missing um, Jokic. But Stu, again, he's 6'8 and can't jump. And Livers is like 6'7 and he can't jump. And he's not a great rebounder. And so we're going to give up offensive rebounds. And, you know, so I, I, I was so happy that we started. He started who I would have started. He started... Cade and Ivy and Asur and Stu and Bagley. And he hadn't been starting Bagley, but then he, he started him. And Bagley was energized and did a great job against Jokic and got him flustered. And he was a big part of why Jokic got technicals. He did, you know, Marvin did make some mistakes. You know, he did get some, Ill I think twice he got called for illegal screens, which are killer once, at a, you know, in the fourth quarter or towards the end of the game. Um but not down the stretch, not in the last nine minutes, at least he didn't play. So it's real frustrating when we had a chance, you know, there, Cade was shooting good. Ivy, Ivy comes out in the first half. He scores, um, he's incredible. He plays 16 minutes, six for seven, one for one on threes, three assists, no turnovers. And, you know, 
that's what I've been waiting for, you know. And a lot of you guys have been wanting Ivy to play and start and get more minutes, and he finally did. And not that he can't, he's not going to do this, obviously, every night, but he came in with energy. He took the ball to the basket. He blew by people. He drew people and dished it for dunks and like he does so well. And, you know, it just – but second half, you know, it seems like when we can't score. So he is a – we need somebody to score besides Cade, and Ivy's the guy that can do it. But for whatever reason, Ivy got um, zero shots in the second half. He got, I think he made two free throws. Um, we did turn it, we, we made lots of mistakes. Cade t made some careless, goofy turnovers like he does. You know, and he, he, did, he only had one turnover in the first half, and then he had at least three turnovers in the second half. And so, and, and they, they were, no, he had four turnovers in the second half. And they weren't, some of them were real, just bad ones. And again, we're, one time we we're trying to get the ball down low to the post and he just throws it over their head. One time he's kicking out to the wing and he just like throws it out of bounds because he's not focused. But he did show, he did show he's the player that we want him to be and he can be a great player. You know, he's 38 minutes and 27 points. But it is frustrating, you know, and like I said, Monty said we can't get a rebound and we fouled too much, but we're undersized. We had an advantage. We had an advantage when he went out. They had nobody that could deal with um, Marvin down low and even nobody that could guard um, Weissman. But, of course, he has no faith in Weissman, so he's not going to get a chance. And I'm not sure Weissman needs to play a lot, but I think when we have an advantage and we can't get a rebound, like he said, and we're, we're playing these guys that are too short and can't score, and, you know, again, um, Stu, Stu does a great job for what he does, but when you need somebody to score, you cannot count on him to score. He can make shots if he's left wide open. He can make shots if his man gets goes helps somebody out and then he's left open for a, a dunk underneath, he can score then. Same with Asar. So we had Asar in there, and he he only played 10 minutes. Asar only played 10 minutes in the first half because he got three fouls. So he he didn't do what he normally does. He still got seven rebounds. He played 24 minutes, and he got two blocks. They were great blocks and you know he he was four for ten and they were I think all four of his shots were dunks but we just can't play at that you know when we can't score and we don't have we play out there with three guys that can't score and we have Marvin sitting on the bench who's at a hot hand and it just was frustrating for me I was nervous this whole game you know we were ahead we were behind we, we Cade made a couple of free throws with 11 uh, with three minutes to go and put us ahead but we we just did not score at, at the end of the game we couldn't make a basket so I don't know it's 12 games in a row that we've lost and but anyway please subscribe I'm no I'm real fired up I forgot to say that at the beginning but please subscribe just click on that I appreciate it very much we're getting close to a thousand um so we um got to turn around and we got to play in Indiana on Friday, so the guys get some days off, and it's very sad that, you know, I know as a coach when you have are disappointed and you have those days off, it, nothing, the turkey's not going to taste as good, I can tell you that much. But um, here's some other things. I, I get, you know, I know people will get tired of, oh, no excuses. I, there's guys on podcasts that are either acting like there's somebody died or that they're just ranting and screaming. One podcaster I know, and... You know, that we got to trade for somebody and, uh, you know, but, you know, here's here's something, Troy Weaver. Why don't we trade for somebody as good as Jalen Duran? How about that? We would win some games. So uh, Jalen played with, from um, the beginning of the season, October 25th to November 8th. He played in about eight games. Our Pistons were 17th in the league in defense and 20th in offense. So after that, he didn't play, and we all of a sudden now we're, instead of um, 17th in defense, we're 27th in defense, and we're 24th in offense. So we just, we went down in both areas. We're 24th in offense instead of 20th in offense. So we went way down in both, and it's not surprising. He was a key, and even when he did come back and played some games after he got hurt, he wasn't he wasn't himself. So I'm glad I'm glad they're holding him out. I, I'm hoping he comes back Friday because that you know that I think that'd be a good time. He's been out quite a while, and unless he has even a twinge of pain, then don't let him play. I know Monty Morris is getting close. We still no word on Boyan, but what if we could trade for somebody as good as Boyan? That would be incredible 
But we have Boyan, and we don't have to trade anybody for him. What if we could trade uh, and get somebody as good as Monte Morris to stabilize our backcourt? We already have him, and they just need to play. They just need to get healthy, and I, I know it's not an excuse. And it, It's not an excuse that we're too young because we make those mistakes. They had these veteran players, Reggie Jackson and Caldwell Pope, two former Pistons, scored 21 and 20 against us. I don't know what you guys thought. Didn't it look like to you that um, – Reggie Jackson had gained like 50 pounds from the time when he played for the Pistons. He, he looked like he was, I don't know, maybe it was the stuff he was wearing underneath his uniform. I don't know, but he looked pretty big. But um, if we got those guys, we don't need to panic and make a trade. If a good trade comes along and we can get something good, we should trade for him. If we, but we don't have to give up, you know, any of our big assets. It's not time to panic. I mean, I, I understand what if you are, if you're panicked and you're frustrated, you are. And I'm I'm frustrated that we had we should have won this game tonight for sure, and again he started the lineup that I hoped he would, and then at the down the stretch he went small, and, and we couldn't get a rebound. He said we couldn't get offensive rebounds at key times, and they scored on offensive rebounds, and we had no interior defense because you know we don't have any shot blockers down there, so it's just disappointing. What if we could trade and get somebody as good as Jaden Ivey? Jaden Ivey, you. Did you watch him in the first half? He, he was a rocket going to the rim, and he was one for one on three. So here's the vision, you know, with Cade and Ivy playing together, and we didn't get to see it enough, but there was a possession where Ivy drives to the basket, and I've been talking about this all the time. When Ivy drives to the basket, he draws people. He draws the gravity of the whole team, especially after he's made, driven in there two or three times. Everybody collapses. Cade's wide open for a three. He kicks it out. Cade makes the three. A couple possessions later, Cade drives to the basket. Everybody collapses on Cade. He kicks it out. Ivy's wide open, three. And that's the vision. That's what can happen. We do need, you know, more players on the court. When we had Marvin out there, we had a third offensive threat. And so it wasn't as bad having Stu because Stu can do, do things. Stu can play that little role where if he's wide open for three, he can catch it. Or, again, like I said, if he – if he um, if his man leaves to help and he can get it underneath and dunk it, but he can't post up. We posted him up and he tried to score over people. He can't score over anybody. He for he played center his rookie year in the second year and he was one of the worst finished around the rim in the in the league. Um, another big thing that did hurt us and you know nobody wants to miss. Nobody wants to be bad. You know, Livers didn't want to be one for seven, and Burks Burks has been struggling. You know since he got hurt and. Who knows? He was one for five from the field and 0 for four on threes. And we just, we need him. You know, he only played him 17 minutes because he, he struggled. So, um, you know, everybody talks about our, how our young team is, you know, making excuses for our young team. The, the Michigan State University starters on their basketball team is older than the Pistons starters. How about that? And, you know that you know we you're tired of losing. I'm tired of losing, but those guys are going to make plays. And they're going to get better, and they showed some signs of getting better. We throughout the game, we we had some bad stretches where we missed a lot of easy shots, and good opportunities to score, and things just didn't quite click. And then we did end up still turning it over 18 times, which is too many, especially you know we turned it over a lot in the second half, but. Anyway, like I said, Bagley played only 26 minutes, 7 for 13, 4 for 5 on free throws, 8 rebounds, 18 points. And we had we made one bucket in the last nine minutes, and he couldn't find his way onto the court. We had mismatches. We couldn't get rebounds. He had eight rebounds. I saw 24 minutes, 4 for 10. I'm sure all four of his shots were dunks. He got blocked a couple times underneath. Um, seven rebounds. He had two blocks and a really good block. He blocked it right off. Uh, Porter Jr.'s head. It was really cool. Um, Stu, 34 minutes, 4 for 8. So he's been doing that. Stu's not forcing things. He's taking shots that are coming to him. He's shooting good percentage. 1 for 2 on threes. 2 for 2 on free throws. Really efficient. But his misses were when he tried to score down low over people when he can't. Or yeah. Uh, so that's just frustrating. He, he does try to play within himself. He had two blocks too. So that was really good. In 11 points. Cade, again, 38 minutes, seven for 17, two for four on threes, 11 for 11 on free throws, which is awesome. Three rebounds, nine assists, 
three steals, one block, and he forced some other turnovers, especially in the first half. He was energized on defense. He was really hounding people and really making things happen on, you know, for us on defense. He didn't, you know, I think he probably got a little bit tired at the second half, but again, his, he had four turnovers in the second half and that and some of them were just reckless. So Livers, 23 minutes, he was on a minutes restriction. <laughs> I wish he would have been restricted the last nine minutes of the game, but I know Monty, I, I, I see what Monty talks about and I know, understand what Monty's talking about. Again, a guy that can, plays tough on defense. He works really hard on defense. He's really smart on defense, but he's not quick. He's not fast. He can't jump really high. He's a better athlete than I thought he was coming out of college, but he's never been consistently good. And so we have this game. We we have a 12-game losing streak, and we got a game we got a chance to win. He hasn't played all year, and we play him down the stretch. So, again, it's just a little frustrating. Killian played 14 minutes, 0 for 2, 0 for 1 on threes, 2 assists, 0 points. So, We've seen that Killian before, and it's you know it's not his fault. He was playing, like I said, it was ironic that he he was playing all the time when he shot terribly, and then he started shooting good, and then all of a sudden now he he doesn't play anymore, which I still don't think he should play. I just think we have I, Ivy's way better, and Ivy has way more potential. I uh, um, stand the man, Amude. I said 18 points, four for eight, three for five on threes. He's fearless, 11 points. Sasser only played five minutes, one for two. We shot 44%. They shot 46%. We shot 33% only on threes. We were bad. And 39% on, um, they shot 39%. So, again, Burks has to make threes. And we just got to get, you know, bogey back and get some guys that can shoot threes. Livers, you know, he's 0 for 3 on threes. So, um, free throws, 24 for 26. We actually outscored a team from the line. We shot 92%. You know, Katie was 11 for 11, so that made a big difference. They were 16 for 21, 76%. So uh, rebounds, 43 rebounds for us, 42 for them. We had 18 turnovers. They had 14 turnovers. We scored 56 points in the paint, but how many in the, the last nine minutes did we score in the paint? We scored one. Kay drove to the basket and made a point, a basket, win bucket in the paint. We made no threes, and but, you know, I can only imagine if Marvin were in the game. So... Um, I'd like to just talk about, you know, we, we only play the, uh, the Nuggets, and Jokic is just this incredible player. He's one of the greatest passers, if not, you know, in history. And he, if you haven't seen it, you should go to YouTube. And he threw a pass. He, he took an inbounds pass. He was on the sideline. Free throw line extended at the opposite end of the court from where his basket was. He throws the ball all the way from... Over three quarters of the court, he throws it above the rim in the perfect spot so that Gordon could dunk it. It was the probably had to be the greatest pass I've ever seen. Another thing about Jokic is two guys in history um, average twenty points, have averaged twenty points a game, ten rebounds, and five assists for their careers. And it's Jokic and Larry Bird and. Larry Bird could pass a lot like Jokic. If Larry Bird touched the ball as much as Jokic, I think he would have even better numbers than he did have. Plus, he had a bad back, and he played four years in college. But anyway, he was – I hated Larry Bird. I, you know, We had a big rivalry with the Celtics back then. Um, but, you know, again, we play the Pacers on Friday, and then the following Monday we play the Wizards. And the Wizards, they can – you know, we – it's going to be hard to beat, win at the Pacers. We certainly can win, especially if we do some things like we did tonight. And Monty gets his, um, you know, rotations settled in and figured out some things. And um, But the Pacers still, you know, they're, they're at home and their offense is really rolling. They're still, like I said, they're one of the top offenses in the in the NBA. And then, but if we don't win by, to the Wizards, then, you know, that's a game that we should win. But they still could beat us. So anyway, again, please subscribe on YouTube and leave a thumbs up. Comment. I love your comments. We got a lot of really bright uh, listeners. And be the reason that somebody feels loved and cared for. And I hope you have a great Thanksgiving if I don't come on before then. And again, just be grateful for all that we have, even the 12-game losing streak. Go Pistons.